in the name of Allah, the Beneficent and the Merciful, the one God to whom all praise is due, the Lord of all the world, Allah, the Revealer of all truth, the Sender of the Prophets and Messengers that are mentioned in the Bible and Holy Quran. We thank Allah for his many blessings. We thank him for his many gifts, his goodness, his mercy. I thank him as a student of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad for discovering his vision in our affairs. It's one thing to read and to learn of God's mercy to people. It's one thing to know that God raised Moses and through Moses the children of Israel were delivered out of bondage. It's one thing to read and to know Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, that was raised by God from his own people, the people of Arabia. And through the revelation of God to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he was able to bring his people out of ignominity out of their spiritual stupor, raised them from moral degeneration to be a light unto the world and their condition transformed through the word of God. That's right. We read God's miracles, we read of his wonders, his mercy, his goodness, his love. But I have to ask the God, you did it for me. You did it for those. Come on, over here, over there. Will not your love for me? Come on now. My people have suffered for four hundred Yes. Yeah. Is your arm too short that it cannot reach the black man in the Western Hemisphere? Come on now. Who was hit in the head, Come on. buried in the north corner of the Western world? Did your arm only reach? The people in the Middle East through the prophets? Come on now. Mm -hmm. Or can your hand, That's right. can your arm stretch across one continent to another continent? Come on, Mrs. And reach your people Come on. who were taken captive and put in the holes of shit Come on, right. and made slaves to another. Oh, yes, sir. Oh, yes. For 400 years, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that the first of our fathers, our ancestors that were brought into slavery, they were brought on a ship named Jesus. Right. Just right. think about it. Yes. Think about the enemy that uses the good name Come on now. of a righteous servant of God to do his evil and wickedness in the name Come on now. of a righteous servant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, little did our people know that it would be 400 years mm -hmm. before the real Jesus <coughs> would come. <coughs> Come on now. I thank Allah yes. that his 
mom was not too sure Teach. to say. That's right. I thank him for not forsaking us. Right. I thank him for coming yes. as he promised that he would. Yes. Come on. And intervened in our affairs in the person That's right. of Master Father. Yes. And grace. But greater than a messenger, greater than That's a prophet. Right. Mm. Well, after the prophets, you don't look for another prophet. That's right. right. Come on, man. You look for the one that's called the Messiah. That's right. That's right. And the scripture says, my brother Jeffrey and I, that we pass these scriptures, that one scripture. We loved to those who are in bondage. Come on now. I may not be quoting it perfectly, Pastor. <laughs> to them belong the Messiah. Mm. Go ahead. That's it. That's why the Jews cannot claim to be. Come on now. The offspring or the seed of Abraham. That's right. Because the offspring and seed of Abraham are put in bondage for a period of 400 years. So for unto us, Come on, a child is born. Come on now, brother. A son is given. Come on. The Messiah that the whole world is looking for Teacher. is that black man, That's right, the Honorable Elijah. I'm falling more and more in love with my dad. <laughs> Come on now. He's your dad. That's right. <laughs> Why do we pray on this wise? Our Father. That's right. See? So he's not just my Father. Right. I can claim him on the blood, you know? Let's go as far as it goes. <laughs> the blood is thicker than water, but the Spirit is thicker than both. That's See? right. See? 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 That's right. Our Father. Our Father. Yes, sir. Our Father. Which I didn't have. Come on That's now. Right. How will be thy name? Come on now. Kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. Come on. As it is in heaven. Almighty God has given us an everlasting father. Yes, sir. No such thing in America as black theology without Elijah Moses. That's, right. That's, That's right. right. You know what I mean? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We didn't even start conceptualizing a black Jesus. That's right. That's right. Until the Honorable Elijah Muhammad right. started teaching That's us right. That's right. that the Jesus of 2,000 years ago was a black man. That's, right. That's the truth. That's right. He is the father of black consciousness, yes. black theology. Right. Elijah Muhammad. The thinkers, yeah. the historians. If it wasn't for the teachings of the Elijah Muhammad and us of our origin, Alex Haley would never have done the research. That's right. He was inspired by the teachings That's right. and his talks with Malcolm X. That's right. And he went and confirmed that what Elijah taught us that the first of the slaves brought over here from Africa were Muslims. Yes, sir. That's, right. That's why it took 64 years, which are hidden years, and they give you that the first slave 
came in 1619. But the first of the slaves came in 1555. That's right. That's right. So there's 64 hidden years mm -hmm. where the enemy had to break a strong God-fearing, God-praising mm -hmm. original man. Mm -hmm. And it's not so much that he broke the parents. Mm -hmm. He bred them and they produce children. Yes, they talk to eat the wrong food right. and put fear in that generation when they were babies. So when they grew up, they grew up in fear of the enemy. How you feeling tonight? Fine. But I would not be able to stand here. Come on now. No, we wouldn't even be talking about Elijah Muhammad today on. Yeah, if it right. were not for the man. That's right. The man. That's the right. The chief helper. That's the right. The student. That's right. The lover of Elijah. That's right. The honorable minister. And if you do not know the value, purpose, and function, 
function of what Allah has in creation for benefit, then you will disrespect, mistreat, mishandle, misuse, and abuse Come on now. what you're ignorant of that gets us in trouble with God. Everything, my dear beloved brothers and sisters in creation, has everything. Never dismiss the tiniest insect. Do not judge the value of things based upon size or quantity. That's not how you measure and um, uh, uh, evaluate the worth of a thing. Come on. The tiniest molecule, the tiniest cell in your body has value. In fact, you and I are many cells on. from one cell. So that one cell had tremendous value because it kept on itself and multiplying itself. Yes, and in that one cell of life was the intelligence yes. to produce what you and I are today. Yes. Everything in creation we are taught from the Quran has aim and purpose. Your life is invaluable. But you don't know the value of your own life. So it's easy to throw poisons and toxins mm -hmm. down into the body. If you notice the things that you don't value, you stop mistreating it, you're careless with it, you're reckless with it. Because it's lost its value in your eye. Lost its value in your mind. And when it loses value, you discard it. But the God finds value in refuge. You throw away stuff. But God is recycling everything. Oh, hey. The God you throw away, That's right. it's recycled in the earth. Yes. Talking about, of course, organic things, not necessarily plastics and the chemical things that men make. But everything in creation recycles itself. Think about yes, that. Yes, sir. You make something out to be uh, picked up by the, the garbage people. Cycle. Right? Uh -huh. But somebody at night come, come down the street. <laughs> 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 pick up. Like, right. He's collecting That's right. all kind of stuff. Yes. See? Yes, right. It lost back. Somebody else sees value in that metal and knows how to recycle that come metal, on, exchange on, that metal. Come on, come on now. But because you didn't know the value of it, you just threw it away. Somebody need to have no more value. Think about that. These great teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad introduce to you and me aim, purpose, and value so we live a purposeful life. That's right. And when you live a purposeful life, you eat better. That's right. Because a purposeful life is a life that has an aim, it has an objective, it has a destiny to reach. So I can't be careless anymore. Because I want to live. That's right. Come on, man. In the days of ignorance, mm. in the days of a devalued state of mind that did not 
perceive itself of having value, mm. then we can dump jump mm. into our bodies like a garbage can. Mm. Nice. I can smoke up dope and yeah. drugs. Mm. Come on. I can put drugs in my veins. Mm. Just look at the stupidity that we do it yes. to ourselves. So a sane person looking at human behavior like that steps back to say, what the hell has happened Come on, man. to that person that they would take a needle and inject in themselves heroin mm -hmm. just for what? So that these uh, endorphins mm -hmm. and that you could by influence of chemicals Come on, now. Come on. put yourself in a state of mind mm -hmm. that knowledge could produce for you Come on. but in ignorance chemicals now have to compensate or replace Indeed. what the absence of knowledge would give you if the brain was properly stimulated right. and aroused through the endocrine system that the right hormones and chemicals can be produced and released in the brain Break it down. when the brain is Properly, right. aligned properly, on, and it's fed yes. by the source and author of your life. Y'all yes, with me? Yes, sir. I don't need alcohol, I don't need drugs. On, That's now. right. So, in the world of the enemy, he prescribes drugs. Yeah. Drugs for you to sleep. Drugs for you to correct everything right. that you right. should, with knowledge, be able to auto-correct. Auto-correct. So he makes you and I dependent. And because of the conditions and circumstances as we talked about on Sunday, the pressure and the stress is so great that it depletes the brain of natural chemicals. Yeah, that's so we're imbalanced mentally. And the stress and the pressure in our lives, many of them coming from bad relationships. Now, to be without money, that's, or to be stressed because the bills got to be paid and you don't know where the money going to come from, that's bad. Yeah. But ain't nothing worse than a bad, me, a bad relationship, a bad marriage. The stress that that puts on the mind. I'd rather be in debt and file bankruptcy than have a bad relationship. Come on, man. Y'all with me? Y'all yes, yes, yes. know what I'm talking about. I see some damaged goods. <laughs> hey, I'm with you. We Got into some fender benders. Yes, <laughs> some of us got into some bad accidents. Yes, it was fatal. Oh, wow. <laughs> some are still recovering. Mr. Bottle, 
Sister Cocaine, mm. Mm. Brother Cannabis, mm. huh? Come on. Auntie Molly, <laughs> huh? <laughs> you don't need it. You don't need it. Because all those things give you momentary pleasure, momentary high, right? Right. But you're still stressed. You still rest with the problem no matter how many times you smoke to escape drink to escape come on now reality is staring you and me in the face come on now teeth so living life with with respect and gratitude gives you and me joy mm -hmm. and happiness mm -hmm. peace security Right. And a manifold of blessings. Mm -hmm. Elijah Muhammad and his teachings could be summed up in one word. Demand on 
on each other. Yes, Whether you know it or not. Come on, brother, man. And that's why once you as the female give yourself to a man physically without the commitment. See? That's what angers you. And then if you and I are trying to live an honorable life and to be a, a good Muslim, but I disobey the Lord, so I'm putting a fig leaf over my head. <laughs> because the Lord said, stay away from that. The day you sleep with her, you will surely die. And they don't read really <laughs> That's, that's my version. <laughs> you can do all of this, brother FY. <laughs> but that ain't GT that's in the midst of the garden. <laughs> stay away, stay away, stay away. Stay away. <laughs> but she's so attractive, Lord, I just wanna. <laughs> Put a little leverage. Because the thing that the God Come on now. commands us not to do, to stay away from, it's for your good, it's for your and my protection. Come on now, come on. And the minute we disobey his commands, his instructions, mm. what comes up? Guilt, shame. Mm -hmm. Huh? Shame. And you feel awful because you know right. that the Lord God told you. Right. And therein begins the death, but your eyes are open. Mm. Y'all all right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. So he or she that is not willing to struggle. Come on now. Fight for your own. Fight for marriage. Fight for family. Yes, sir. Fight in life's struggle, meaning that you are willing to confront and face difficulty. Yes. He who's not willing to struggle and face difficulty is already dead. Mm. You're just here, but you're not living. Come on. You're just taking that oxygen and you're just here. But you haven't started to live. And that's why most of us are miserable. Mm -hmm. Oh, let's see. Y'all all right? Come on now. Come on now. See? You're, you're not happy until you are willing to struggle. Because the very life offered by God was ordained for struggle. That's right. Did you hear that? Is that what you said? Struggle is ordained. That's right. Come on. Your life was made to work, not to have a life of ease. Come on. Sir, I need me. You work from the very beginning. That's right. Swimming against the current. You were working. Come on. And you were rewarded for that work because you reached the goal at that stage of your journey, Jeez. which was the end. But you didn't stop there. Your cell divided. Huh? Come on now. And you kept on building yourself up. Yeah. Yeah. Come on right. now. Notice the lesson. Building yourself up in darkness. Yeah. Come on now. See, if you're in a bad space and place wow. and in darkness, but you're not building yourself up. To prepare yourself come on, to come out of that space, place, darkness. Come on, yeah. teach it. To be delivered from that circumstance, that situation. But you're building yourself up with knowledge. Come on. To extricate yourself from a space and a place that is holding you back, holding you down. Come on now. 
You and I came out of that womb when we outgrew the confines. That's right. Come on now. That restricted growth. Yes, sir. No growth, no deliverance. Say that. Say that. Did you hear me? Yes, no growth. No deliverance. No deliverance. Growth, expansion, development. Mm. And when you reach the max of your stage of development in that place, then the womb can't hold you anymore. There's no situation, no relationship, no circumstance, nothing in life that holds you back when you outgrow. The circumstance, the situation, the relationship, and you will remain trapped until you grow sufficiently to be delivered. But you don't have all your life to do it. Come on. <laughs> Come, on. Come, on. Come, on. Come on now, brother. Because there's a time set. That's right. On every situation, every circumstance, every condition. So some never make it out of the womb. Wow. Some are still birds. Y'all all right? Talk to me. Yes, sir. Come on now. Struggle is ordained. Pain is a natural part of life. Teach it. With difficulty. Come on now. There is what? Ease. Come on. Now. With it. With it. Teach it. Meaning every time that you resolve. Come on now. To take on the challenge. Every time you embrace even the most negative of circumstances and situations, God comes right. to the forefront. Yes, the God in you was born to face challenges. That's in right. fact, the body, you don't need God if you don't have no struggle and challenges. That heaven was gonna is gonna is a place where we just gonna be sitting down, laying down, doing nothing. What kind of heaven is that? <laughs> it don't exist. Yes, it is. That's right. There is no happiness without struggle. There is no happiness, joy, peace right. without work. That's right. Without struggle. Yes. Without pain. No pain, no gain. No no Allah does not lay on any soul a burden beyond its scope. Teach it, teach it. So whatever burden you are carrying, boy, bear with me. Come on, come on, now. come on. That you are collapsing under. Is the burden of disobedience, rebellion, and deviation from God. That is undue stress and pressure on the mind because the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said the brain cell was created to think what? Right. So when you knowingly, deliberately, consciously, Go against what is right. It's like cleaning against the grain of wood. Wow. You're damaging the brain. Mm -hmm. So the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, not only is the brain cell created by God to think right, but he created all the planets to incline mm -hmm. at right angles. Boy, that's... Mm -hmm. Well, I'm a southpaw. Ain't got nothing to do with that. But it's thinking rightly. And the more right you are, the greater is your sight. Come on now. Yes. Come on now. Did you hear what I did? Yes. 
The more right you are in your thinking, in your obedience, in my submission to the will, statute, law, and command of God, the greater is my sight. So there's nothing that can come in my life that God does not give me sight to see my way through that darkness. I can always see the light at the end of the tunnel. Because my heart is right. Come on now. My spirit is right. My thinking is right. Not perfect. Right. But the intent and motive of my heart is a right one. It's a pure one. It's a good one. Come on, Come on. Not a diseased heart that feigns good, but doesn't really mean good. Come on. Y'all all right? Yes, sir. We there. We going to stay there. See? Now, we have to make a better family. Yes, sir. Do you sir. agree? Yes, yes, sir. Do you really agree? Yes, yes sir. sir. Do we have a nation of Islam, a nation of black people without a strong family? No, yes, sir. sir. Is the black family dysfunctional? Yes, yes sir. sir. Very dysfunctional. Yes, sir. Huh? Yeah, but we're contributing come on, come on. Come on, to man. the dysfunctionality yeah. because of the presence of knowledge. In the days of ignorance, see, then we had an excuse. Not today. Not today. Your only excuse is your and my laziness to study and apply. Because everybody in here knows right from wrong. What did you come here to hear? More science? Well, Minister, I came here for solutions to my problems. Okay. But have we decided to keep our duty to God? Mm. Uh, I know you didn't want to go there. <laughs> My problem ain't that. No, it is. <laughs> it starts right there. That's right. The, the unhealthy relationship is a result of your and my dis. Connect with the God. Right. There on, cannot be a happy, healthy relationship between the male and the female outside of a relationship with the God. Right. So this, these verses, y'all with me? Yes, Keep your duty to Allah. Why? By whom you demand one of another your rights and to the ties of relationship, come on, come surely on. Allah is ever a watcher over you. But the first part is, oh people, come on. keep your duty to Allah. Who created you from a single being? That's right. And created its mate of the same kind and spread forth from these two many men and women. But it comes right back and keep your duty. See? Come on now. Duty to God is first and foremost. We got it backwards. We leave God last. And you wonder why? Your life is troubled, my life is troubled. You wonder why things are not working themselves out? It's because we're neglecting the primary duty of our life that the law of our nature demands. 
the nature of the male and female demands the presence of God. That's the one we put off. Come on. And we look to satisfy, as the minister talks about in the study guide, our secondary come on, come on. inclinations. Mm -hmm. Secondary relationships. But the primary one, the primary relationship, yeah. the primary yeah. inclination yeah. is to God. Yeah. And that's why the law by which all the prophets come on. hang on is this law. Love the Lord your God with all of what? Your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And the second law is likened unto the first. Love who? As what? So how in the heck are you going to love her right? Love him right. And you and I are in violation of the first law. Woo. Talk to me. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us that there were three sciences that the enemy said he was not going to teach black folk. The science of warfare, the science of mating, the science of business. If you look at the state of black America, look at the condition of black folk, it's in those three sciences that we are suffering. Economically, in relationships, warfare, you don't know who the enemy is. You take the enemy and you make your friend the enemy. We so the science of mating is critical. Yes. Now I don't want you to re-examine the choice that you've already made too hard. <laughs> <laughs> and say, okay, well the minister told me, hell, I just made a mistake in this choice. Really messed up. <laughs> Those that are married, hang in there. We'll get you through. Those of you who are not married, follow the law. That's right. And save yourself that headache that you see others suffering from. Y'all mm -hmm. with me? Yes, yes sir. sir. And then learn. The science of mating. See, animal husbandry. You see how they breed, right? Dogs, horses, right? Yes. And they study the pedigree. Yes. Now they do this for animals, and we don't do it for us. Because all we look at is the physical. Man, she fine. Man, he fine. Oh, he talk nice. Oh, I just love the way she can take me on higher levels of Islam and the teaching. Man. I know she can help me to be. A pedagogy. But you didn't come and ask for the Carfax report. You don't like coming to the captain. You don't want to come to the minister. Oh, you really don't want to come to me. Word gets around. Oh, the minister, man, he grilled me. Let's go find another minister. Examination, you come to court. Come on, come on, brother. Come on. Come on. Right? Right. In this cross examination. Did you tell him? Come on now. <laughs> come on. 
that you were married only once? The court record here says. <laughs> did you say that you did not abuse a female in your lifetime? Come on, God, man. Brother, please don't bring up all of that every time. No, 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 you got to know. Yes, you got to know the tendency. You got to know the behavioral instincts. Come on, come on now. You got to examine the pedigree. Right. You got to see, see, the natures complement each other, but that don't mean we compatible. Come right. on, man. Right. Well, we grew up in the same neighborhood, went to the same school, and but you didn't come out the same household. Right. right. Do you know that each of us are affected by both family and environment? Yes. 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 Do you know that there is a difference when you choose your mate? That comes from a single household versus the mate that comes from yeah. a married household yeah. where the parents yeah. huh, have fulfilled their vows and have honored their marriage contract for 30 and 40 years. There's a difference between one coming from a stable environment. Meeting someone they're attracted to, but they're coming from an unstable environment. Because the instability of that situation is a need now. To find security from someone that has stability. So the need clouds your judgment. Y'all with me? This is real stuff. The The science, we're talking about a branch of knowledge here that's dealing with the nature of the female. What is science? It's the study of natural law. Come on now. Talk to me. It's a study that is done through observation. Science, earth sciences. You're studying the function and the nature of things. Do you know the nature of the female? No. No. Thank you. <laughs> Do you know your own nature? No. Do you know the nature of the man? I'm not talking about the primitive nature. You, 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 we all know something about our animal side, right? Yes, but to know the nature of the man and the nature of the female, that means you have studied the nature. Boy, y'all with me? See, when you know the female, know. That's right. Not Sue, Tamika, Aisha, Sophia, Jamila. These are all names that denote a personality. Come on, man. Yeah. Come on, man. That grew or attached itself on the nature of the female that is from God. Did you hear what I said? You didn't catch that. If I want to reach you, I don't reach you through your personality. I don't communicate to you through your personality. Through your valence, through, you know, we have developed personalities based on every life experience. So we all got these multiple 
personalities. Given the circumstance, given the situation, another you comes out. <laughs> it, it, you said that's true. It is, right? And you be like, is she? Is she? Where did that come from? All of us got it. All of us got a monster. All of us got a dark side. Just like the moon. And when the dark side of the moon manifests in human nature, there is no communication on the dark side. This is the teaching. And we got one heck of a teaching. So to know first the female, to know first the male, to know thyself. That's the first step before choosing a mate. Come on now. You gotta be so clear on who you are. Where did you come from? Where's I'm going? Because the chooser mate is based upon my aspirations, my goal. Come on now. Opposites attract. Come on now. Man. Right? So we are attracted to each other based upon our similarities mm -hmm. and also by our what? Dissimilarities. So it's our opposites that are attracting. It's what we have in common that's also an attraction. But that doesn't necessarily mean we're compatible. Come on now. Come on. Further examination through the process of observation and inquiry. Ooh. That's why in Islam, when the brother and sister are interested in each other, we bring the parents together. Because we want to inquire what kind of daughter do you have? That's right. Mm -hmm. indeed, indeed. Tell me something about your daughter, father, mother. Oh, she's a stubborn one. <laughs> she got her own mind. But she's just as sweet. Right? Tell me, father, about this son, mother. To oh, he's temperamental. Oh, he's very, when he don't get his way. Oh, I see. <laughs> this is called inquiry. See, you're looking now at the pedigree go ahead, go ahead. of the person to determine whether or not this is a good choice. I may like you, you may be fine, but it don't mean I can live with you. Right. And we can live with each other. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Right. And that's why premarital sex is forbidden. Right. Because you're not supposed to operate a vehicle while intoxicated. It's true. Come on, Go ahead. So you take your patrol. <laughs> with a corona. And what happens? Really? Your judgment is off. See? Pleasure senses have been aroused. See? Now my ability to really judge this person. Sex has interfered with my ability to judge. Come on. Now the nature is making a demand. Yes. Hers. I won't commit me that. I mean. Yeah. <laughs> so let me see how I'm gonna frame.
phrase this. <laughs> My dear and beloved sisters, woman of God, you can't be so stupid to give yourself, see? Before man commits, and then put yourself in that terrible emotional state. Come on now, come on now. So now you wanna obligate me to a commitment because you allow me to park my car in your garage and I did not force my way, there was no forced entry. Huh? Well, you smooth talk me. I stop. You know better. Right. Right. You on. know better what you gotta live with. That's right. That's right. And once you do that, now the anger comes out, and the man is really running that. <laughs> <laughs> running until he want another shot of patrol. See? Sex, premarital sex, just messes the whole thing up. Sir. Come on. And then we men, you know, we like sampling things. That's right. You know, I, I, I don't know if I'm gonna buy this deal, but let's not drive it. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. It looks real beautiful, but I gotta see how it rides. Oh, this is a little rough ride here. Yeah. <laughs> Let me go to the other dealership. I know I'm, I'm putting some real terms, right? But yes, I'm trying to keep it real. Yeah. See? Yeah. You can't let him into your main back like that. No. Right. He knows his homework. He can look at the specifications. He already knows. Right. Is this what you can afford? Is this what you want? Period. That's right. And you keep on stepping. That's right. Y'all with me? That's right. The female is not to be played with. She is not to be sampled. We destroy our community by sampling. Sir. And I take A, and then I sample B. And then all of a sudden, when they get together, you know, oh, he was with you, and he was, look at what that creates, huh? And it creates a very toxic environment, huh? Then if you have this going on in the mosque, how the hell are we gonna have a respectful sisterhood? When I give you the greetings, I saw my malaika, peace be unto you, but I slept with your husband last night. Damn. Brothers, I saw my malaika, but I backdoored you. And I, and I mean peace. Peace is a serious, sacred, Salutation, greeting, it's a vow, man. I am, I am committing myself, as the minister said, what comes from my lips. Yes, sir. I mean it with all my heart. I am my brother's keeper. Come on, man. Yes, sir. That's why until the moral character comes up. Don't expect riches. Don't expect wealth. No, I got to be good. We don't have the moral character to sustain the wealth that the God has to put in our hands. Am I right? We'll go spend it. We'll go gamble it. We'll just even in our so-called Muslim stage. Hmm? Come on, brother. Moral character 
is what makes a beautiful society. And the Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught good manners, protect good morals. This is why we lower our gaze. I'm not supposed to have a long eye contact, because that's the windows to your soul. So your eyes start communicating the whole life. That's right. That's right. It may not be in the word, but it's in the eyes. And you see me, and I see you, and what you got on your mind, I got it on my mind too. Huh? Y'all yes, all right? Yes, sir. So the science of mating, Come on, brother. choosing your mate properly, making the right evaluation, doing your homework properly, that when you make that choice, it's a good choice. And there are no questions that are off limits in courtship. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Now I'm going to say something. Well, I'll leave that for another. It's kind of deep, but I'm going to leave that alone. Now, We've talked about premarital sex. We're talking about the science of mating, choosing a proper mate, and how drunkenness impairs judgment, how lust impairs our ability to make a good decision. And most of our marriages are made on the basis of sex. And therefore, the minister said, when the sex drive diminishes, there's nothing of substance to hold the marriage together. Because it was made from a physical rather than a spiritual desire. Yes, sir. What time is it? 857. And I, I'll, I'll stop it there. Based upon our motive, Come on, brother. The intent determines the longevity of the relationship. See? That's why if it's physical, it wears off. It's short. See? And when the duty and the demands, see? Stop, you ain't got no tolerance for it. When the rights are being violated, nature now starts making a demand, see? And we begin to protest. The lack of justice, the injustice out there, huh? What do we do? We make a demand on just authority. Yeah. Mm. And the longer the cry is denied, the more intense is the cry. Whoa. Till it reaches a point of explosion. Yeah. And people will tear down the society because their rights have been violated. Same thing happens in a relationship and in a home. When those demands are being made and they're not being heard and addressed properly, oh, yeah. then the cry or the demand intensifies because my mate, my partner, my so-called friend, he ain't listening to me. But he's in the position of authority. Mm -hmm. Wow. Talking about the man. Yeah. See? The woman, she only gets dissatisfied when her needs are not being met. The female is, if we may see her as complex, but I'm learning how simple she is. Simple not being absent of me. It don't take much. All she needs is sunshine, attention. All she needs is the proper care, the watering of her. Yeah, right. And brother, she will bloom all the time. And 
that? How do you know? Because when you pursued her, when you expressed interest in her, you saw the face of that flower. Yeah. Right, right, right. <laughs> Is that right? Because your attention was sunshine. Right. Then you followed up with things, water, see, on, a car, a flower, a dinner, a nice text. I love you, girl. <laughs> and it made her to incline towards you. Go ahead, God. Go ahead. Come on now. You know what I'm saying, is right? That's right. That's right. You know it. So if you don't continue the sunshine and the watering of the flower, the flower begins to wilter and die. Right. And no God that says, what the hell is the matter with you, flower? Right. He automatically knows, oh, my beautiful rose, I haven't watered it. Oh, wow. Right. Come on now. Tend to it. Care, care for the vineyard. As the good husband, yes. huh? yes. who understands that the vineyard don't belong to him. Yes. The vineyard belongs to God. And my respect for the God and my fear of God. Ooh. Of messing over, mishandling, and mistreating what is he? We don't think like that, do we? So we mess over her, mistreat her, and think there's no consequences. Come on. Oh, brothers. You see that world out there? Yes, sir. So when the minister says, the world, the condition of the world is a direct result of the mistreatment and abuse. Of women. Yes. Look at it. Yes. Huh? Yes. Do you know that you and I can make enemies from her womb? Mm. Yes. For ourselves. I didn't talk about enemies. Wow. Right. Like, I'm talking to myself by the way we treat her. That's right. A man must learn the sacredness of the female. And you know that when when we were caring for her, come on now, and made her know that you are the only one in there, nobody else but you. She was good. That's right. That's right. We thought about her selling the papers. Yes, we did. Yes, At work. Now all of a sudden. 10, 12 hours, you busy. See, she can feel. Yes. See? Because before you were 10, 12 hours, but you couldn't wait to be with her. Right. Now, all of a sudden, there's a problem. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, brother. No. And so when she starts feeling neglected, mm. and that the attention is no longer there, and the desire is not there, and about to get something else about her. <laughs> but guess what? It's all our fault. Oh yeah. So she begins to make her demand. And if we don't respond, she'll tear the house upon. Hell no. What? And a woman scorn. Woo! So we don't want to be scorned by her. We'd rather be in hell. <laughs> Lord, assign me to the heat of hell than to suffer the scorn. See? That's her anger. That's her pain. That's her disappointment. That's her dissatisfaction because she put her hope in us. Come on now. It's really not that difficult because she has every 
expectation that when we propose to her, that we as a man know what the hell we're doing. <laughs> Am I right, sister? Yes, right. And she don't have no problem throwing that back in our face. <laughs> you knew what you were getting into. <laughs> Because you gave them some. You ain't got to come back to that some. Because that's, that's the thing that messes this thing up. And you know what I'm saying is right. Six months married. And you're one out. Less than a year. This is happening. Two, three years. We don't want to struggle no more. Well, what the hell happened? See? What happened? What happened? Come on, now. You went and got a license for sex. You didn't go get a marriage certificate because you really wanted to be with that person. Because the Bible said for better or for worse. You don't even think about the worse. Please, Lord, don't bring the worst into this marriage because when it comes, I'm out of here. <laughs> in sickness and in health? Oh, stop. That's why when it's one party gets sick, it's, it's stress now. Ugh. We don't got the patience. Where's the care? Where's the love? Where's the attention? Huh? We're irritable. It's like, ugh. This dude, man. <laughs> and you know, you know when it's bad is when you can't even stand the touch, the smell. It's like, oh, I wish he would get. <laughs> Thank you. 
We so trifling. <laughs> we you know we are. We got to clean up, straighten up. Otherwise, we are going to suffer. And we're going to suffer the worst chastisement that already has come into the house. And when I bless to come back before you, I want to show you how the death angel has already come in. Come on, man. And how we have been turned into death angels. You looking for an angel. Ooh. Many of us have been turned into death angels that are wreaking havoc in our own homes. Yeah. Come on, brother. Oh, yeah. Yes. So. May Allah bless us. I hope you got something on it tonight. Yeah. Did, did you enjoy it? May Allah bless us to make better decisions. May Allah bless us to take in this teaching.